I'm with Barry Barnett, and we're talking about what happened on Saturday. A rocket attack from Hezbollah killed 12 children and youth in the north of Israel. Is Israel in mourning today because of this? Yes, we are. It's such a shock and so horrendous. The Druze community is so loyal to Israel. They serve in the Israeli army. They are true Israelis, and they are proud and loyal to Israel. And it was just horrendous. During a football game, the rocket landed, killed all these children, and we're we're still processing it. It's so horrendous. And my view is that Hezbollah are committed to destroying Israel, so they will stop at nothing. There, There is no target they will not target. They won't necessarily always target civilians, but they do target civilian areas and civilians, so it's no surprise to me that they... They targeted this place. First, they claimed that they had sent the rocket. And then, as I understand it on the news, they claimed they didn't send the rocket. So they were lying. It's absolutely clear from the the debris and the analysis of, of the rocket parts that this is an Iranian rocket that Iran gives to Hezbollah. And uh, Hezbollah are are really just a puppet of Iran. Iran is telling them to destroy Israel, and that's what they're trying to do. And they will regret this because the Druze in Lebanon are now up in arms, quite rightly, and the Druze in Lebanon are threatening to to fight Hezbollah, and it's just turning into a mess. And, And this could provoke a war. This could be the trigger. And I really hope it doesn't, but it could. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, Hezbollah have been firing lots of rockets and drones across into Israel. And this is something that's very, very tragic with 12 people being killed, particularly children and youth. Do you see actually a large scale war happening? Israel said they're going to exact revenge. So are they going to do revenge on Lebanon? Do you think they're going to do it on Iran? Where do you think that's going to go? Oh, I definitely see the real possibility of a big war now with Hezbollah in Lebanon, which will be horrible because we, we had to do that in two, as Israelis, we had to fight that in 2006. And even before that, I don't know the whole history, but Hezbollah have been around for a long time. As for whether the, the decision will be made, I think one of the biggest players in this game is going to be America. It's going to be really, really difficult to say how much America and Israel, how much Biden and Netanyahu will talk about what the response will be. There will be a response. We have to respond. We have to show the Druze that we are protecting them. We have to show strength and show Hezbollah that this is not, this is not on. So we have to have a re- response. But whether it's limited or whether there's a full-scale war, it, it's so, so difficult to say. And, and everybody in Israel is preparing now. We're all getting our safe rooms ready in case of a full-scale war. Because Hezbollah have rockets that can reach Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, and that's, you know, that's quite poignant. Do Hezbollah have more rockets than Hamas? Yeah, they're much more sophisticated. They have much more sophisticated Iranian weapons. They've been building up for years and years. I think it's going to be a terrible, terrible war if it goes to a full-scale war. I'm I'm just praying that there'll be a limited strategic response from Israel to to attack the terrorist targets, like they've been doing for a while. I'm just praying it does not go to war. But if it does, is I want you know people to know, and, and Israel wants people to know, that, that Israel is ready. Israel has been preparing ever since October the 8th, when Hezbollah joined this Gaza war. Ever since then, Israel has been preparing, and we have troops who are ready. So... Um, yeah, make no mistake, we're fighting for our lives, and I'm totally proud of the Israeli army protecting not just us, Israelis, and not just Jews, but the West. This is, a, this is really a war between the West and between Iran, and Iran knows that. And, it, and, and really, that's another question mark. How far will Iran go telling Hezbollah what to do? Will they tell them to start a war? So the ball is in the court of both America and Iran at the moment. It's much bigger than just Israel. Uh, Now, Israel sending ground troops to destroy Hamas. Could you see that actually happening in Lebanon as well? Ground troops going in. And do they need to do that? Do you know if there's tunnels in Lebanon? Yeah, I heard on the news there are tunnels in Lebanon. There are threats that Hezbollah want to come across the border and, and... cause terrible atrocities like Hamas. So yes, it's a very real threat and it's a very real possibility Israel will have to send in ground troops like we did in 2006. And that went on 
for weeks, maybe months. So we'll see. There, there's definitely, you know, a willingness on behalf of Israel to get the ground troops ready. And as I say, I just pray we don't have to use them. Hezbollah are in Lebanon. So are they doing this with Lebanon's blessing? It's so complicated, Paul, and I, I don't understand the politics of Lebanon at all. I mean, Hezbollah are part of the Lebanese government, I think, and, and there's lots of other factions, and they're always arguing, and I, I don't know. But there's a lot of talk about pushing Hezbollah back to the Litani River. Now, Hezbollah were pushed back to the Litani River in 2006, and then there was a buffer zone for a while, kind of no man's land between the Litani River and Israel. Actually, I'm not sure about that. I shouldn't say no man's land because there was probably people living there. I'm sure there were. Anyway, it was a kind of buffer zone. And then, you know, Hezbollah have gradually come back to the border of, with Israel and they've come back and they've, you know, reneged on the United Nations resolution, which was meant to stop them going beyond the Latani River towards Israel. So, you know, it's just horrible to have these terrorists on our border you know, sending rockets and missiles and drones all the time. And there are 80,000 Israelis who have had to evacuate from the northern border and they've had to live, you know, in hotels for eight months, nine months, and they're desperate to get back home. So it's an untenable situation and, and really who knows where it's going to go. I imagine if you've left the north of Israel to come further south because of the situation, the rocket fire, if you work, you've had to leave your work so you've got no income and you're, you know, you're struggling and battling that as well. Oh Yeah, that's a great point. I believe that the Israeli government are giving compensation to the evacuees, but I don't know how long that will go on for. I don't know how much it is. I don't know whether it's livable. And quite honestly, it's horrible being away from your work that long because if you're a business, then it's totally suffering. So, as I said, you know, the Israeli government has stated this is an untenable position. Something has to change, whether it's a war or whether Hezbollah pull, pull back. But there has to be a change. We can't go on like this much longer. Who is Hezbollah? Uh, well, Hezbollah means party of God in Arabic, and they are a proxy of Iran, which means that Iran tells them what to do and supplies them with weapons. And Iran clearly tells them to attack Israel and to, to try and destroy Israel. So the real power behind Hezbollah is Iran. Do you fear at the moment you've got Hamas, which is part of Iran, on the, um, the west? You've got Hezbollah in the north. You've got the Houthis in the south. Yeah. <laughs> you've also even got Palestinians within your own country who are enemies. Do you feel scared about what's going on? And does that make you feel nervous? Yes and no. Yes and no, Paul. I definitely have a human fear. I'm definitely afraid when there are missiles and there are rockets and certainly when Iran sent 331 missiles. But then, and I really believe this, then I believe that God did a miracle and through various planes from various countries and various anti-missile and, and iron dome defense mechanisms there were no missiles except for one that got through and that one didn't do much damage so it was a total miracle so i feel safe because as i said before i believe god protects israel but I also i have human fear of what's going on and and there's also shia terrorists in iraq that's another one on the eastern border so we are surrounded by enemies but we've always been you know, under persecution or oppression throughout history. So we, we will get through this. But let's all hope and pray for a turn, for a turn of heart amongst the terrorists. There are terrorists whose heart changes. I mean, uh, I don't know whether you're aware, Paul, there's a guy called Mosab Hassan Youssef, who is the son of a Hamas leader. And he turned and became... He realized the evil that was going on with Hamas and he became part of Israel's intelligence network and worked for, for Israel as a spy. And he became a Christian as well. So he had a complete change of heart. So there is always hope. And that's why I pray for, for the terrorists to have a change of heart because they cannot win. They cannot defeat Israel or the God of Israel. And that's because there's promises attached to Israel. So if you're fighting Israel, you're fighting God. And the Bible says the God of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Amen. You put it very well, Paul. And, and I really believe that. So, you know, let's pray for, for more Mosab Hassan Yusufs who will turn and become people who have changed their heart and transformed, transformed by God. Well, Barry, thank you very much for sharing today. You're so, so welcome. Thank you for interviewing.